Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're back on the uh, Monarch 16-inch lathe restoration, and uh, we took this whole apron apart in a previous episode, and in this edition, we're gonna put it all back together. So uh, just to get, bring you up to date on what's kind of happened in between, you know, we got this casting all cleaned up. I went ahead and got it painted. Uh, you know, did that off camera. Nobody wants to see me paint. Uh, the other thing I did was uh, went by and got all brand new bearings uh, to go in here. And there was a, quite a box full of bearings. Uh, I don't know, there was probably, there was probably 15 bearings, I guess, all together in here. Maybe even more than that, I have to count them up. Uh, just went to my local bearings and drives uh, dealer. Uh, we have a pretty good bearing supply house here in town. They had to order most of the stuff that was in there because it is a little bit odd. And it actually took them a little bit of work uh, to find equivalent bearings on some of these because they were not um, necessarily real common, Some of, a couple of the bearings in here. Um, all the bearings together, it was about $350 uh, is what I spent on new bearings. But all the bearings in here were pretty much just shot, mainly because of somebody's screw up in the past where nothing in here was getting lubricated. And we talked about that in the previous episode, and hopefully we will have that resolved down the road so that we will be getting proper lubrication in here in the future uh, to protect those bearings and keep them uh, going much longer next time. Uh, so anyway, we're to the point now where I'm ready to start putting things back together, and uh, we'll get you in here and show you the process. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a bird's eye view here. This is, of course, the front of the apron. I got it laying down on its back right now. And there's two things here I need to do. First off, we've got our new sight glass uh, that we wanna put in here. This is for the oil reservoir, and it basically just lets you see how much oil is in there. So this will sit in here, and you can see the oil level. Uh, tell when you need to run, add new oil. And the other thing is, is we've got a uh, little machinery tag. Uh, that was on here talking about the oil that needs to go back on as well. So I'm gonna start with this and I'll start, this is uh, made by Bajour, I believe is where I got, uh, where I ordered these from. I also ordered these through bear my local bearings and drives dealer. These are exactly like the ones that were in there. This is the one that was in there though. You can see it's completely messed up. I mean, I tried cleaning these, whatever, there was, there was no saving them. Uh, and I just basically took a punch and beat it out from the back. And you can see it's exactly the same little sight glass and uh, I was able to order those. So to put these in, they recommend putting a little coat of silicone around it and then just kind of driving it in there. So I've got a little uh, clear silicon here. And we will, see what I think I'll do. I think I'm gonna apply it to the inside here. Just put a nice little coat around there. And while I'm at it, I'll just uh, put what's left on my finger around the outside edge of this. Okay. I want my uh, little holes on here, one to be at the top and one to be at the bottom. So we'll just kind of get it kind of laid in there roughly where we want it. And then to drive this in, I've just got a little block of wood that's a little bit larger than the outside of this, or about the same size as the outside of this. And we'll just tap her in place. And that should do it. So get that silicon out of there. Next thing I want to do is put my tag in here. Um, you can see my drive pins. Those are the original ones. Uh, I got some brand new ones. Um, ordered those from McMaster Car. Uh, I, I keep a, a supply of them around here in various sizes uh, just for this use. I'll take my drive pin and hopefully uh, just kind of get it started. And then I will take a, uh, just a punch here and we will hammer those in place. All right. So that's got all that done. And I think we're ready to start putting bearings together. 
One nice thing about videotaping, taking this apart, is I was able to go back and kind of watch how it all went together, refresh my memory, and hopefully that'll help me get it put back together again. Um, and looking at the, how things went, it looks like we need to just kind of start at this gear and kind of build our way across. It looks like that's kind of reverse of how I did it and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start up here. This is the gear that the hand wheel fits on. Uh, there's a little cam gear right, or cam on here that, that pumps an oil pump. So as this turns, it's a turn in this cam and then this right here then feeds into some things that eventually go to the rack on the, the carriage or, and it moves everything side to side. So inside this little housing right here, uh, there's two, um, bearings that fit on the shaft that kind of tighten up on each other and that's what holds that in place and there's a spacer in between them and this is a spacer I had taken it out um, it just fits up in here there's a little set screw right here that lines up with this um, hole and we're gonna basically just put this in here I'm gonna over here pardon my head all right that's got that lined up and then a little set screw. We'll just take the little set screw now and go in there and tighten that in place. Okay. Now from there, I've got my bearings and races here and we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a race on each side. So a race will come in this end and one will come in the other and go flat up against that um, spacer in there. Just using this same wood block to kind of protect everything. And I'm gonna have to get down here probably a little bit in front of y'all now. All right, so that's now, that race is not super tight in there. As you can see, I can actually spin it, but getting it started is, is the challenge. But that just goes right up against that spacer. And there's another race that will do the exact same thing from the other side. So um, let me get that one in. Tell you what, I think I'm going to kind of turn this up on its end. I know you guys can't see down in this hole, but uh, we're just gonna do the same process here and uh, knock this one in. All right, that one is in as well. So now we've got our little uh, gear here. It goes on the back. Uh, here's our bearing. This should just slide right up on there like such. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to bring this in from the back and kind of feed these pieces on. Here's a spacer. There's the bearing. All right, those are all going in now. And we'll have to And then on the front side here, we have the other bearing. And then the spacer. And then our hand wheel comes on next. And I'm not ready to put the hand wheel on yet, but that kind of <coughs> holds it all in place. Um, we're just gonna leave it like that. But man, that feels much better than what it did. So this next uh, gear that goes in here is probably gonna be the most challenging one. 
just because there's so much stuff that goes on the shaft. So here's the shaft. This little uh, gear sticks out the back. That's what engages into the rack. Uh, when you turn the hand wheel, there's a gear that engages onto this gear that then rotates that. But we got a spacer that goes on this shaft and a bearing, then another spacer, then the gear. And I got a new keyway to go in the, in the gear, then a spacer, a bearing, then this outside spacer will fit up in here and then you uh, tighten it all up on the end. So uh, we got a lot of aligning to do. Um, this uh, outside spacer I think will go on. Uh, then the rest of it, we're gonna have to kind of drive in. Uh, well, let's see, I think I can go ahead and build it out to the keyway first. And uh, then the other side will have to come in from, from the inside. So anyway, um, this is gonna be this is gonna be challenging. So I got this shaft partially built as far as I can go. So we got the spacer on the outside. There's the bearing. There's another spacer, and then the next thing to go on is going to be the gear, and uh, it will fit up on this like such. Um, but the gear's got to go on from the inside. So um, we're going to get over here and get that in there and start fishing it in. I've already tested it, it goes up on there just fine. So uh, we just kind of got to slide it all in. First thing I want to do is kind of take some of these oil lines that are in here and kind of bend them out of the way so I can get the gear into uh, the setup here. And it's just going to fish down in here like such and it will come over and engage with the spur gear back up here and now take our assembly here uh, start it in the hole and I got to get my keyway lined up yeah that's it right there Alright, let's see if I can uh, slide that on there. Very good. Now, what I got to do is just kind of drive this in. And for that, I think I'm going to get a dead blow hammer. I'll tell you what, before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the spacer on the back side here. That will kind of help line it up in this other slot to kind of keep it going in there somewhat straight. So now I think I can see if I can tap that in. All right. Very good. And my gears line up. Everything looks good there. Let me spin this around. We see the other side now. I've already put my spacer in. Next thing to go in is the bearing. And the other one was kind of tough to get started. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to roll this back. There it starts. So I need something to kind of get up over this. So I just got a little piece of, uh, it's actually a piece of bronze bushing. Uh, but it fits up over there and now I can just drive that straight down the rest of the way and that's uh, pretty good right there. All right, I'm going to set it back up on its front here. There is a keyway right there. Little Woodruff key. We got another brand new one here. And let me tap that in place. All right, that Woodruff key is in place. And then that keyway aligns right here. There we go. Final thing here is we will uh, put this little spacer on the front and then there's a uh, nut that holds it all in place. I 
and I will tighten that up and adjust it after we get it on the machine. That's actually pretty good right there. Uh, you can see everything is nice and smooth. I put a spacer up here just to kind of keep this one tight. Uh, this spacer will come out. That's where the hand will fit. But uh, that feels really good. Hopefully you can see the gear train in here. So of course the hand wheel goes up on the front here. That goes through here to this little spur gear that engages with the larger spur gear to give us a reduction in speed. And then that goes out to this spur gear which will fit onto the rack up under the bottom of the, the whole carriage. And that's what will move it back and forth. So uh, that part is done. So this is the next uh, gear that will go in. And I wanted to go ahead and show you kind of the assembly on it. Uh, just so we can talk about it or whatever and kind of see how it goes. So this is a shaft. Uh, this is one of the little um, clutch gears where you got a little cam piece here. You pull this down on the front and it pushes this together and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but we got new bearings. There's thrust bearing here, a thrust bearing here, and a thrust bearing here. And that's all the new bearings in here. So this piece goes into the back. Uh, this is actually riding in a bronze bushing. Um, clean that just a touch. Thrust bearing goes on first. Next comes uh, this little gear here. And if you look, it's kind of got a cone shape in there that matches this gear. And this is what, when you push these together, there's a spring in here, but when you push these together, it mates and it, it grabs. And that's basically how the clutch system works. Uh, but we got to put the clutch in. So there's another thrust bearing here for the spring. The spring goes in there. And then this gear goes on the end. And again, when you push those together, it will uh, close that up. Thrust bearing on the end. Uh, this little, basically a big washer. And then this is your cam that actually triggers all of it. And uh, when you push that in there, when you push it down, it squeezes this together. Of course, it has to be adjusted and what have you. So I kind of wanted to show the assembly uh, before we put this together. Let me take it all back apart. Because uh, I discovered after I put the last gear in, this one has to go in first. So I'm going to have to actually take something back apart. Uh, but I did want to kind of go ahead and show you that assembly. So let me show you over here what the problem is. So here's the issue. This gear fits in this little hole back here and it kind of fits up against the, the end. And this uh, area here actually rides in a, a kind of a, a, a bushing down there. So there is no bearing down there. It's just, it's just riding on a bushing. The problem is, is that this has to go down into the hole, down in there and slide in. And then this gear is behind this one. So this one has to go in first before this gear comes in. So I didn't catch that. That's my mistake. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this gear back out. We'll slide the other one in. We'll put this back in. Uh, it's not gonna be a huge deal, just a little time hiccup for me. I'm not gonna show you guys pulling this out. Um, I'm just gonna do it off camera but I do want to point it out so that uh, if you're doing one, you know you got to get that gear in first. And there's another gear like that that goes right here. And I remember it's got to go in first as well. In fact, we may go ahead and just put it in. Uh, it's a very similar arrangement to the one we have here with a little clutch set up. Uh, so we'll go, probably go ahead and get that one in before we get too far along as well. So let me get off camera. I'll get this done. We'll be back in a minute. So I'm ready for reassembly. I've got my gear that's got to go in first and I've put a little bit of oil on this uh, since that is going in a bushing. I'm gonna fish it down in here to get it over here where it goes. And I apologize, my arm's in the way. All right, that gear is in place. And now next thing I can go ahead and do is put this gear back together. Uh, so we're going to drop the big gear back down in here. Roll it over here where it needs to go. And before I do that, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to see this keyway right here. I can't see that in there very well. So I'm going to just kind of take a Sharpie pen and mark that just so that I can see it a little bit better. And that'll help me line that keyway up. 
So I'm gonna roll this in here. I'm gonna put that mark up. This uh, shaft comes in this way. It's already pre-assembled. Okay, we're coming in, we're to the uh, bearing now. There is a, uh, another space from the back. I'm gonna put this in. This just kind of helps align this and keeps it going in straight. I think last time I did it, yeah. This was dead blow hammer. That bearing's just tight. It's not super tight. It's not a press fit. Okay. That's in there. The spacer goes in there. And then uh, the other bearing goes on the front side here. Alright, so now that gear is in and we are now ready to put our assembly black through the other the back side here. Alright, so everything rides on this shaft. And this shaft, see this keyway here, there's a there's a, a set screw here that has a little dog point. It goes down and actually engages in this. So this keeps that shaft. This shaft does not turn, it does not rotate. Um, but we gotta build our bearing or build everything as we go in there. All right, so this little spring is what uh, takes the pressure off the clutch. And it, there's a little uh, hole up inside this gear that the spring fits up into. And because it's so long, it needs to go in first. Problem is, is that my hand is just a little bit too fat. <laughs> there we go. I think that's kind of in there. All right, let me show you what I've done. I'm having trouble getting this clutch piece to fit behind the big gear here. There's just not enough room for it to go in. So I've actually taken this apart. I haven't taken all this out, but I've I pushed it back. You see, here's the bearing exposed. So I've created some clearance inside here that will hopefully allow me to get that in there. So we're gonna try now again uh, to put this together. The gear's still down in there. There's my my spring is still inside of there. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna drop this thrust bearing down in here, just like we did before. We'll put this shaft through to, just to kind of catch it. I can pull that out once it, the other one comes in and lines up. So, all right. I just kind of want it to hang there while I then put the clutch piece in and get it lined up. And I'm just using this punch as an alignment tool. Everything is on that shaft. It would help if I had a shaft that was the exact right size, but I think this will work. All right, so now I've got to get this thrust bearing on here and then have this shaft go in there and thread the needle and we'll pull the, the alignment shaft out. So this is gonna be challenging in itself just because there's not much room left down in here. In fact, I'm gonna probably have to crawl in front of the camera to get this done, my apologies. All right, so I've got the three pieces of the thrust bearing on there. Align these together now. And I think we got it. So now I'm gonna Push this back together. All right, we will put this uh, little dog point set screw in here. That'll engage into that keyway and keep that from turning. So we're back over on the front now and um, we got another set of uh, thrust bearings that go up in here like such. On top of that, there's a washer. And then the little cam 
fits up on here. And the castle nut. And all this will have to be adjusted. I'm just gonna kinda get it in here for right now. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Squirt some oil up in there. It's gonna be somewhere right along in there. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go ahead and put any pins in here. I'm just gonna leave it open for now. Once we get it onto the machine, I will adjust those and then pin it in place, fine tune it. But uh, that seems to be working. All right, you see this is all just freewheeling. So this is like if you're just turning the crank by hand and uh, just moving it back and forth on the carriage. Now, when you want to engage the, 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 the feed, uh, it's gonna come actually the, and be powered off of a, uh, another gear that we've got to put in here yet, but it's all tied in on this. So now you push in this clutch. If you do, if you see this little um, clutch pad in there, it's gonna pull in and now it's tight inside of there. So now when I turn this, well, it's tight, but you can see it's turning the whole gear. Everything's turning together. So now it's powering off of the auto feed. You release that and it's back to free spinning. So anyway, that's just kind of how that works so far. And uh, we got two more gear trains to put in here. So the next gear that will go in here actually fits right up in, inside of this uh, housing here. Uh, I'll have to take these off to get them in there, whatever. But there's two bearings uh, and they're in races and there's one on this side, there's one on the other side. I have uh, purchased new races. I have already knocked the old ones out. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get these new races tapped in here. I'm just using a dead blow hammer. And we will knock those in and I'll knock one in on the other side. May have to get my brass out here and uh, get a little bit more heft behind it. So I've got my races in for the next shaft, but before we put that in there, uh, just like before, we got this little clutch uh, gear and it's got to go in first. So uh, let me uh, squirt some oil up on this, get this uh, lubed up some, and we're going to drop this one in place because it's got to go in behind those other gears and we'll finish building that one in a minute. Next thing is, uh, this shaft here, I've already kind of got it disassembled. Uh, this is going to fit right up in here, and there's another bearing behind that. So let me get that bearing out. So that bearing is going to fit up just on that shaft. We will come in from behind. Uh, before we do, though, there's some other ones that go on here. This gear goes on right behind that bearing or behind the, the, the gear that's built into it. There's a spacer that goes on next. Drop that in, here we go. This uh, gear here is keyed. Let me see if I can, there's the keyway. Like such, but I've got to do a little adjusting in here first. So let me, uh, We've got this in here. I'm gonna to have to do some adjusting to this gear again later on. And actually I've got to get um, 
there's a my worm gear, my worm fit stand inside of here. I'm actually gonna have to knock it out to get it down in there. But before I do that, there's some things I've got to do down below. So I'm not gonna be too worried about that at the moment. Uh, that'll be easy enough to pop out and pop back in uh, later on. Also, this is where the uh, worm gear drives everything. So uh, this worm gear will fit up on, onto this and lock it in place. I'm not ready to put this on yet either because I've got to get a new one ordered uh, from Monarch. Uh, this uh, worm gear here, just a little bit about it. Um, it's, a, it's a special, it's an oddball size worm gear. I think it's got like 32 teeth and uh, I can't find anything that's being commercially made uh, with this pitch and this size. It's either like 30 or 40 teeth. Um, and also, it, it's, 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 everything about this thing is just non-standard. Uh, I, I was thinking about making this gear, uh, but I would have to have basically a, um, um, I'd basically have to have a worm hob that's exactly like this worm gear uh, with this pitch and this diameter, and this is not a standard size hob. And so to have one made is gonna cost more. Just to have the hob made to make the gear is gonna cost more than the gear. The gear is like $530 new from Monarch. So uh, I'm gonna be doling out some cash uh, for this little bronze gear. Uh, it's not a matter of can I make it? Yes, I can make it, but it's gonna cost me more to make it than if I just bought it. So um, yeah, it's a lot of money, but that's what we're gonna do. So anyway, we're gonna leave that one alone for right now. It's, it's, it's good for the time being. Uh, again, we're gonna have to do some adjustments and stuff to it later, but everything looks good right now. Next thing is to put the, the final uh, shaft in here. And it's very similar to the one over here with the little lever on there. Uh, we're gonna have to go through the same process to get it in there. So let me get all my pieces together. So we're ready to put the last uh, gear in here. And again, I've already put the one in the back in here. I've already got the spring up in there. Uh, we're gonna take our little punch here. This is a spring thrust bearing that goes up in here. I'll go ahead and use this punch as an alignment tool again. We'll come in with our next gear that has to go on all of this. Uh, try to get all this aligned. Okay. I'm just gonna put, use this hammer to hopefully put a little weight down on that shaft to kind of hold it in place. Yeah, that's kind of sketchy. This shaft goes through here, but we got another thrust bearing that goes on first. So um, let's see if we can get this fished in here. There's the first piece. Please don't drop it. There's the second piece. Third piece, please don't drop it. Okay. So now, let's see if we can get it to go through the alignment. And that worked. I've already got my key in here and I've, I've tested it. So I'm gonna just kind of tap it in place. This slides on that. In fact, I'm gonna put a little oil on that. There it goes. I just need to tighten everything up on the other side, hopefully. Let me turn the apron around. So we have another thrust bearing that goes up in here, like such. Then we have our uh, plate that goes up on it. and put our castle nut on here. All 
All right, guys, we have that clutch is now pretty well in place. And what this one does is this one uh, actually feeds uh, the cross slide. So when you engage, uh, that one's just kind of spinning in there loose, but when you engage it, it tightens up with this gear. We're almost through here. Uh, got everything back in here except one last gear. And uh, this gear basically transfers from uh, this clutch. So when we engage this clutch, it uh, tightens up this gear back here, which drives this gear, which then goes up to the, the uh, cross slide. So we need to put that one in. All it is is just an idler. Um, there's, this fits up on here like such. And then there's a set screw that holds that one and keeps it from turning. So let me find that set screw. So before I put this in again, I'm gonna make a mark on here. There's my set screw. I can't see any of this because it's all up inside. So I'm gonna mark right there so I know where the top is. That just gives me a little shortcut. So we'll place this in here like such. Go ahead and uh, get our gear going in. Okay. Little hole that this dog point set screw goes into engages, and it does. So we'll go ahead and install this back in. All right. Very good. Okay, we've made good progress. I pretty well got the gear train, everything back together now, uh, like it needs to be. And uh, everything appears to be in good shape. Everything appears to be working like it's supposed to. So um, I still have some stuff to put back here, the half nuts, there's an interlock and some other things in here. But like I said, we got some, an issue down here with the worm that I still need to take care of. So before I put all that together, uh, we're gonna hold off. And uh, just to update what we got, there, there's two bushings down here that the feed rod uh, goes through. And I had a viewer contact me and said, hey, you need to check those bushings out. He's got the same lathe that's been through it before. And he said he had a good bit of wear in there. And I hadn't even noticed it, but once I got down here and started looking, these uh, bushings are uh, pretty worn, uh, kind of down where that gear is pressing down on it. It, it just wears the bottom of it out. So I'm gonna have to knock these uh, bushings out and make some new ones. And uh, I wanna kind of leave all this part in here open so that I can work on that. And that's gonna be a separate video that we do that on. Well guys, I think that's gonna be a wrap on this particular uh, episode. Uh, you know, I had a lot of comments when I took this thing apart about how they didn't know how in the world I was ever gonna get it back together. And uh, just a couple of comments on that because just document what you do really well. Take lots of pictures. You know, I'm shooting video, so I have the advantage of being able to go back and look at my video. I still sometimes will stop and take a snapshot so that, uh, you know, I can look and see how something's oriented. Don't take for granted that you'll remember it. And then two, uh, you know, I've got an exploded parts list here. It's not the greatest in the world. Uh, it really doesn't show everything that I would like for it to show, uh, but you can kind of see how things go together and you can see the order that they go on the shafts. And uh, that right there is also a lifesaver, having something like that. And uh, this was actually up on my website at vintagemachinery.org. It's in, one, in the publication reprints, along with lots of other publications. Now we don't have everything in the, under the sun, uh, but we have a lot of stuff on there that you can go and find stuff like this. Uh, so that's another big help. So with that, um, that's going to be all for this episode. Like I said, we're going to go ahead in the next one and, and work on these uh, bushings down here and then probably get this thing completely reassembled back together uh, so that it's ready to go back onto the machine. We're getting real close. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like it. Leave me some comments. Um, if you uh, haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And with that, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.